Ah, Nintendo Directs. You gotta love them. Whether you get your dream reveal or are left disappointed, they keep the flames of speculation ignited year-round for Nintendo fans. However, while Nintendo Directs have become a mainstay and flat out a way of life for modern Nintendo fans, it wasn't always this way. And sometimes it's easy to forget that the very nature of Nintendo Directs has evolved a lot over the years. So in this video, we're going to go over how Nintendo Directs began and how they became what they are today. The first Nintendo Direct aired on October 21st, 2011, and it's quite shocking to go back to today. It had both a Japanese version hosted by Global President Satoru Iwata and a North American version hosted by Nintendo of America President Reggie fils -Aimé. It was very, very short by modern Nintendo Direct standards, with a runtime under 8 minutes, and had a lot of that time dedicated to dull news. Literally their opener? Literally their opener for the show was the announcement of Hulu Plus. And Reggie even said the price of the service basically reading a third-party streaming ad. Even the first-party game stuff wasn't new, full trailers, but short reminders of games coming out. This was the beginning of something great, but it clearly had a long way to go. At least we got a classic Nintendo meme out of it, with the oh-so-memorable Reggie fils what's wrong with you quote. Hi, I'm Reggie from Nintendo of America. And this marks a new endeavor for Nintendo. Direct video news feeds designed just for you. For this first installment, we've got some important news if you're an owner of Nintendo 3DS or just thinking of becoming one. And really, if you're neither one yet, what's wrong with you? Now, let me be clear. In this video, we're obviously not going to recap every individual Nintendo Direct. That would be far too boring, and take far too long. But we're going to focus on moments in time where clear changes happened to the Nintendo Direct format and its presenters. But what's so impressive is we had one of those key moments right away as Nintendo immediately responded to feedback and saw the flaws with their debut Direct. As the first Nintendo Direct the following year on February 22nd, 2012 had significant changes already. The runtime didn't jump majorly, but it did increase to about 12 minutes. But the most important changes were to the format. Nintendo decided to incorporate more people instead of just having a single host talk over short clips of games. Nintendo of America had their Treehouse employees, who handle localization and marketing for the region, discuss the games, giving more insight. It added some life to the presentation, and really was the start of Nintendo putting more employees in front of the camera. You could really say this was the precursor to Nintendo Treehouse Live. For years after this, Nintendo started to let their Treehouse employees play games live during major events like E3, and this was the first time Nintendo really let their Treehouse employees directly show their personalities and knowledge to general Nintendo fans. With that being said, Nintendo still had a long way to go with their direct format, as we still did not receive a single non commentated trailer during the entire show. However, we didn't have to wait too long, as Nintendo of Europe hosted a direct called Satoru Shibata Presents European Nintendo News on April 21st, 2012. This presentation, with a nearly 33 minute runtime, was a mix of both segments where Nintendo of Europe Satoru Shibata delivered info about games and services, as well as straight up game trailers, finally! No commentary, nothing. Just pure game trailers were shown to a Western audience in this direct style format for the first time. And the game that had the honor of being the first traditional trailer was Mario Tennis Open for the 3DS. You know what's sad though, and this is a reminder of how long ago these videos were, that NOE Direct was only uploaded in SD resolution. We weren't even guaranteed 720p video for a major news video at that time. Now, something that we don't have anymore is something called Nintendo Direct Mini. And the very first Mini Direct couldn't have been worse. It aired on November 27th, 2012, and was just under 6 minutes, and it focused exclusively on the downloadable Coin Rush packs for new Super Mario Bros. 2. Obviously, it was a mistake to use the Direct Mini name for that video, as it led to bottom barrel expectations for Nintendo Direct Minis for a very long time. 
This video is more focused on the history of more normal directs, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the very first Pokemon Direct, which aired on January 8th, 2013. This was the first time a Direct was named after a specific game or franchise. Obviously, we've had a Direct Mini focused on one game at this point, but this is the first time the Direct branding was used for something else like this. This was the reveal of Pokemon X and Y, and Pokemon Directs continue to this day. Another date worth mentioning is January 23rd, 2013. This was called the Wii U Direct, and it's noteworthy because it's the first time a specific system was mentioned in the Direct name. Aside from a Wii U preview video they made the day before their E3 2012 press conference, but I think that's different. We had Directs that mostly focused on one system like the 3DS, but this is the first Direct where they promised in the title that it would focus on games from only one system. Of course, nowadays, this doesn't exist, as Nintendo has moved to a hybrid system like the Switch. But platform-specific directs were a thing at times over the years. And personally, looking back at them, it really emphasizes how much I love the Switch. The idea of a direct getting announced and everyone being able to be excited is awesome. But back in the day, I remember the comments being split when a Wii U or 3DS-specific direct was announced, as there were always people who wanted games announced for one platform more than the other. But since the Switch came out, every single Nintendo fan can be excited at the same time, and I think that's a great thing. One of the biggest and most significant moments in Nintendo Direct history happened in June 2013, as for the first time Nintendo elected to not host a traditional live E3 press conference, and instead aired a pre-recorded Nintendo Direct. It's really funny to look back on this now, because at the time it was an extremely controversial decision. I remember reading all the hot takes, like Nintendo was giving up, their games would get overshadowed without a live press conference, there was only a big two now, meaning Sony and Microsoft, instead of a big three, and many, many more. Basically, a lot of people weren't just dooming that Nintendo doing a direct meant their E3 might be disappointing, they were dooming over the whole company because of that decision. Of course, now we live in a world where E3 doesn't exist, and everyone basically started doing their own brand of Nintendo Directs whether it's PlayStation State of Plays, Xbox Developer, Directs, or anything else. Satori Wada's vision that delivering information directly to the consumer in a controlled manner was the path of the future was indeed correct, and it was the decision to commit to a Direct at E3 2013, instead of doing a traditional press conference that I believe cemented their path forward. It was a statement that Nintendo Directs were where the big news would be, and while a lot of people at the time doubted, history has proven that this bold decision was the right one. On July 18th, 2013, just a month after they committed to the Nintendo Direct format being used for E3, they took another leap forward, this time when it came to their Nintendo Direct minis. This time it had a runtime of a little over 20 minutes, and it also featured noteworthy news on some first party and third party games, proving once again that Nintendo was listening to feedback on their various different styles of directs. After the negative response to their original Nintendo Direct Mini, which just featured DLC news for a single game, they finally updated the format and turned it into the definition of a Mini Direct. It didn't have as much exciting new stuff as a general Nintendo Direct, but it still felt like a worthwhile news event. In 2014, the format for general Nintendo Direct stayed the same, as they were in 2013. But it's worth pointing out that Nintendo had a lot of very long game-specific Directs. Obviously, Directs dedicated to a single game were not new. But the sheer amount of long game-specific directs were. Of course, in 2014, we had multiple Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS directs that were over 35 minutes. But that's pretty natural, as we know Sakurai always has a lot to say about a new Smash Bros. But we also had game-specific directs for Bayonetta 2, Mario Kart 8, and Hyrule Warriors that were all 25 minutes plus. And we also had the hilarious Tomodachi Life Direct, which if you haven't seen it, you genuinely should watch it just for entertainment value, even if it's an old game that you're not going to play. It's to this day possibly the most surreal video Nintendo has ever made. Since we're going through the history of different versions of Nintendo Directs, I am forced to mention that on June 1st, 2015, Nintendo aired their first Nintendo Direct Micro, as opposed to Nintendo Direct Mini. Now, if you're wondering the difference, there wasn't really one. It was 17 minutes long and had news for a few different games. The only reason they went with the micro branding instead of mini, in my opinion, was because the, the game they opened with was the ill-fated Chibi Robo Ziplash. They had built it and shrunk down and went all in on the presentation style, but format-wise, it basically was a mini direct. 
Now, in this video, we're focusing on things that Nintendo actually called directs. But at E3 2015, Nintendo did not call their video a Nintendo Direct, as it was simply called the Nintendo Digital Event. This is something they did a lot of at E3, but I still wanted to point out how Nintendo tried to differentiate themselves at E3 presentation-wise. They went with Muppets, made by the Jim Henson Company, to give their video a little production value beyond a normal Direct. They did the same thing a year prior by working with Robot Chicken for E3. I believe this was because there was still a negative stigma around Nintendo not doing a traditional press conference, so they wanted to make it stand out. But again, as history will show, the traditional Nintendo Direct style presentation was more than good enough for E3, as after this year they never went for this type of unique presentation style again, and instead made their E3 videos more similar to general Nintendo Directs. Unfortunately, Nintendo's E3 digital event is mostly remembered as the last event featuring longtime president Satoru Iwata. And Nintendo's use of Muppets allowed Iwata to not have to be on camera while he was in the late stages of his battle with cancer. As someone that had been following Nintendo and gaming news for a very long time, I was devastated, and it was hard to fathom the future of Nintendo without him. Iwata started Nintendo Directs because he wanted to speak directly to Nintendo fans, and that will be remembered and appreciated forever. On November 12th, 2015, Nintendo had their first Nintendo Direct since the passing of the late great Satoru Iwata. It's worth pointing out there was a five-month gap between E3 and that Direct, and during that time there was actually a lot of speculation if Nintendo would continue to do them, as it was known they were Iwata's baby, and some people questioned if Nintendo would commit to them. Obviously, it made sense to continue them from a marketing perspective, but that was a uniquely long drought at the time. Hi everyone, Reggie here from Nintendo. Welcome back to our first Nintendo Direct since the passing of late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. We appreciate all your kind messages. We'll continue to deliver information about our games and franchises directly to you. Thank you for your support. As for the Nintendo Direct itself, it was fairly standard and followed the format they had been using for a while. In 2016, we had only one general Nintendo Direct, one 3DS specific Direct, and an Animal Crossing Direct. This obviously had to do with the fact that the Nintendo Switch was coming in early 2017, and the last year of the Wii U was really barren. An event I have to mention, even if it wasn't a Nintendo Direct, is the Nintendo Switch presentation live from Japan that went down on January 13th, 2017. This obviously was a huge event because we got all the Switch launch details like release date and price, as well as you look at the first 12 months of key software titles. But it also is significant in the context of this video because it wasn't a pre-recorded Nintendo Direct style video. Nintendo had not had a major showcase that was a live press event like this since E3 2012, which predates Nintendo Directs entirely. This was a one-off for the generation, however, as Nintendo did continue to focus on Direct style presentations after this event. Again, while we're focusing on the evolution of Nintendo Directs specifically, it's important to note the things that spawned from Directs, and at the end of February 2017, just a few days before the launch of the Nintendo Switch, we had our first indie focus presentation in a video called Nintendo Switch Nindie Showcase. If you're someone who only started paying attention to Nintendo during the Switch era, it's probably pretty surprising that there weren't indie showcases before Switch, because they've become so darn common. But it's true. The Switch became a huge platform for indies, but as is clear here, Nintendo themselves started prioritizing them more before the Switch had even established its large install base. Now we finally come to it, the first Nintendo Direct of the Switch era on April 12th, 2017, just a little over a month after the Switch launched. This was a major change for Nintendo Directs, and in fact the first shakeup of the format in a while. First off, our host was Yoshiaki Koizumi, who had a huge presence at the Nintendo Switch Showcase in January, just before the Switch launched. He was a longtime designer, director, and producer at Nintendo, who was stepping up as a public face for Nintendo's new generation. A new host wasn't the only change to the format, as Nintendo decided to try out having headlines in their directs. This had them delivering smaller bits of news very quickly, and they spoiled what they were going to talk about by showing a graphic of all their headlines at once. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the style, as I really don't like knowing what's going to come next. It's extra deflating if you see all the headlines and know you don't care about any of the next few trailers. I was not the only one that had a negative opinion of this, and headlines became few and far between. 
Regardless, it was clear that the Switch was a new generation, and the faces we saw and the way news was presented was going to change. Nintendo Directs and their various offshoots stayed very similar and didn't have many changes until 2020. One of the most significant changes in 2018 and 2019 was Shinya Takahashi, who was the general manager of Nintendo's EPD development teams, basically became the main host of Nintendo Directs. Koizumi still appeared, but Takahashi definitely became the main face starting in 2018. Another change during these years came to their indie presentations. Nintendo in 2017 and 2018 was using the aforementioned Nindy's name, but in August 2019 they switched to the name Indie World, which was actually very fitting as it reflected their name around the globe. Some Western fans might not know this, but instead of Nindy's, Nintendo had actually been using the name Indie World in Japan for over a year prior to this change. 2020 was of course an anomaly because of lockdowns affecting companies and people. So this led to a year where we didn't actually get a general Nintendo Direct. We got multiple Indie Worlds and game slash franchise specific Directs, but no big general one. The one change to the Nintendo Direct lineup this year was the debut of Partner Directs. In 2020, we got three different mini partner directs, which I remember confusing a lot of people at the time. Nintendo described them as focusing on their development and publishing partners, and in 2020, that's what they mostly did. It's worth pointing out, though, that Cadence of Hyrule, a game using the Zelda IP, was actually the first game shown in one of these mini partner directs, and while it was not developed by Nintendo, it was published by them. That was overall the story of 2020, though. Noteworthy first party stuff was generally discussed by itself elsewhere and third parties mostly filled the mini partner directs. Then, finally, on February 17th, 2021, over a year since our last general Nintendo Direct, we finally got a proper, large, juicy Direct with a runtime of over 50 minutes. It was our classic mix of third party and first party, and was hosted by Shinya Takahashi. So despite the extremely long gap, Nintendo did follow their tried and true format. The next Nintendo Direct in 2021 has quite a lot of historical significance, as it was Nintendo's final E3 Nintendo Direct. E3 2019 was the last in-person E3 event, but in 2021, after the previous year was cancelled, the ESA, the organization that runs E3, brought back the show as a digital-only event. This obviously meant Nintendo couldn't have a show floor presence for hands-on previews, but their Direct format was already built for this. Nintendo could have passed on paying for the E3 label and just hosted a June Nintendo Direct, but they decided to give E3 one last shot. The final E3 Direct was memorable because of the long-awaited return of 2D Metroid in the form of Metroid Dread, and the first significant trailer for Tears of the Kingdom, which was still just known as the sequel to Breath of the Wild at the time. Nintendo throughout the rest of 2021, 2022, and through all of 2023, stayed true to their established format, with Shinya Takahashi hosting, Yoshiaki Koizumi showing up occasionally, and the way they presented news staying the same. It wasn't until February 2024 that we had a slight change to the Nintendo Direct schedule. You might remember what I talked about the debut of mini partner directs in 2020, presentations that were focused on Nintendo's development and publishing partners. Well, the direct we got in February 2024 was a partner direct, but it was not a mini. This was the first time Mini had been removed from the title of one of these things. I remember people being confused by this and wondering why Nintendo removed the Mini label from this one. We've had Mini partners up to about 90 minutes long, and this one was 23, so not a huge difference. But the one notable key difference is Nintendo closed this partner showcase with the reveal of Endless Ocean Luminous, a full first party game. That sets some expectations that partner directs without the Mini title might be more important but I honestly think it's more likely Nintendo has just chosen to drop the mini title completely, regardless of content. For the simple reason that mini implies small, lesser news, which doesn't paint the game shown in the best light. The final Nintendo Direct presentation curveball at the time of recording this video was the Indie World Plus Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase on August 27, 2024. This was the first time Nintendo did a double feature like this, and it threw a lot of people off. If you've been following this video, then you've picked up on the fact that Nintendo usually has general directs in February, June, and September. So doing a partner at the very end of August and combining it with an indie world, no less, actually led to a lot of speculation that Nintendo didn't have enough to announce for a pure Switch 1 general direct, and was clearing the slate of Switch 1 news because their Switch to reveal might be soon. 
As of the time I'm making this video, in mid-October 2024, it's unclear when the next big Nintendo Direct will be, and if the Switch 2 will be revealed before that time or even during it. It's actually why I wanted to make this video now, as I wanted to recap the beginning of Nintendo Directs all the way through the Switch 1 era. And if there is a Switch 2 reveal Direct, I did not want to have to include it as I would like to catalog Switch 2 Directs separately. Anyway, we've seen how Nintendo changed up their Directs once the Switch generation began, and how they've added different types of events during the generation as well. To recap, Directs prior to the Switch had a different style, and that was largely down, I believe, to having each region handle Directs a bit more separately. We didn't see the Nintendo Treehouse crew during Directs like we used to during the Wii U and 3DS days. And Nintendo of Europe doesn't put anyone in front of the camera like they used to do with Satoru Shibata either. With the Switch generation, Nintendo unified more and focused on their Directs having more consistency between regions, with Shinya Takahashi and Yochiaki Koizumi basically being the face of Directs for everyone. We also saw Nintendo add various events to their calendar for indies and third-party partners, something they didn't do at all prior to Switch. I'm really curious if we see Nintendo make any changes to their Nintendo Direct format, hosts, or even add new spin-off presentations for the next generation. If you have any thoughts on Nintendo Direct's past, present, or possibly future, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. I'm a small channel and it really helps the cutthroat YouTube algorithm let at least a few people see my videos. And it lets me know what kind of videos to make in the future. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.